Hey guys, this is Pixel Dan coming to you from the 2020 New York Toy Fair, and I'm here at DC Collectibles with Jim Fletcher somewhere. Where could he be? Hello, DC Collectibles fans. What? I can't do this. What is happening right now? Why? Are we... Okay. This was his idea. I don't. I don't oh, even. Know. Come on now. I'm just trying to. I, I'm just trying to do my job. Well, it's hard to live up to the laying on the carpet with our yeah. hands under our. Talk chin. to me. About <laughs> they wanted the same treatment, and I'm uh, like, no. No. That's, only, that's only deserved. one person. That's yeah. Deserved. Well, I, I appreciate mean, I that. Say, I appreciate. Honestly, it. I don't think anyone else has that footage. That's true. That's true. I mean, I, okay. You got a new unique open. Yeah. So that's, okay. That's my opening to talk about the deceased line. Clearly. Oh, we're just gonna jump right. straight into deceased. Yeah. That's right. perfect. I like it. Let's right. do it. Because that's like horror. Yeah. That. Okay. Yep. Right, sure. That's all, that's all I got. So, okay. so okay. great interview. Thanks for coming. Okay. Well, we'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Wrap up going all right. Let's do it. Let's do it. Fine. Deceased. Let's go. Deceased. Okay. So this book's been doing great for DC. I sure. mean, it's it's a I think it's a surprise hit nobody saw coming, and we were able to jump on it pretty fast because with our essentials line we had already done a lot of these characters, so we were able to just put new heads on them, scratch them all up, make them look all creepy, and it's actually one of my favorite things I'm showing here. And yeah. there's new prototypes here that haven't even been seen anywhere because they're still great. So um, like some of the details on the faces where you guys go around later and look at them, yeah, sure. they are amazingly yeah. cool. So it's quite a cast there. I've got a pretty good assortment of figures with, you know, between Deathstroke, Nightwing, Joker, Harley, Aquaman, Superman, Batman. Do I have to list them all? You know who they are, right? Yeah, absolutely, okay. absolutely. I think most of your your listeners will understand. No, I, I hope they know who they are. And if you don't, Bat Guy, Super Dude. Um, yeah. Well, since you're already guest star on somebody else's, you know. That's, that's show, right. Yeah, it's that's a continuity thing, right awesome. there. Let's keep it going. And we also have the uh, normal essentials down. The normal? Can I call them normal essentials? Un unblemished there you go. essentials. There you go. They're alive. Yeah, that was our new. Uh, that was our new line of these when we had the translucent flash from the Speed Force, yeah. Batman, Nightwing. And Superman over there, and then we're doing a six pack of the Justice League. Oh, cool. So, if Kisha, and there are slightly different decos, so if you didn't buy them last time, you can go buy all six now. Awesome. Which I recommend you do, of course. Oh, of course, yeah, absolutely. The shill for DC that I am. <laughs> okay, so you've been here through many iterations of the Batman anime series. Absolutely, absolutely. And we're showing some of these uh, older ones because we may start, there's been a big pent up demand because a lot of them are sold out for a long time. Oh. So we're putting them back out to see if there's any interest in, in re-releasing some of the figures. Aging interest. I see. Aging interest. Yeah, you like that? That's yeah. good. That's pretty good. Might have to use it for something. Okay. Cool. Uh, cool. I'll accept my royalty TM, checks. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, hold on. <laughs> um, oh, I'm a little short. So oh, okay. All right. I'll get you up next time. Next time. Ne yeah. San Diego or next, <laughs> next year. So right now we've got the Batman. What's cool about this line, we were trying to figure out what, what do we do? We've gone through so many figures. Sure. We didn't get the Clock King, unfortunately. Or kind of make it. There's, there's like two or three. A Rupert Thorn would have been cool, oh, yeah. right? But just I'm like, I don't know if we can generate the sales, and I really want to do some of these. So we're like, you know what? Why don't we take characters that haven't been on the show and see how that does? Luckily, that's done great. So I mean, Red Hood's up there. The cool. Azrael. This Vampire Batman's pretty cool, and the Batman who lasts has been such a huge character. With like, let's try to figure out how to make him. So he fits into this universe. Sure, yeah. Plus, this this Thomas Wayne Batman looks like he just walked right off the show. Yeah, I mean, yeah. that's great. And trying to figure out guys like Talons, like how do we make them look like they're on the show? Because this is a pretty complicated design. Right. And yeah, and Ty was like giving us all these different ideas. Ty Templeton who was drawing all these, stripping out stuff and working with the art directors, trying to figure out what's going to be. How do we just keep them in continuity? And I think we did a pretty good job lining them all up because and I, other people thought so too. Because now there's a comic book. By the mighty Paul Dini, who will be writing wow, the comic book to help us amazing. develop this stuff. I know, it's crazy, right? Yeah. So there's some pages from the book they've got out here. Oh, look at um, that. When the alternate covers. Oh, cool. So Dave Johnson did this cover. So um, it's really pretty cool. So, yeah. you know, the editorial is getting behind us on this one. I think the synergy here is going to be fantastic. Because if awesome. we can actually get these out there and people like them, and if the book does really well, then... And I would love to continue this line for another 10 years. Oh, yeah, There's so awesome. many cool characters you could put in here, like Pink Flamingo. Oh, yeah. That'd be insane. Yeah. Professor Pig yeah. in this oh, style. Oh, an animated style? Right? That'd be amazing. That'd be so yeah. good. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, now you can see how the eyeball fits into everything, right? Yeah. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Okay, I see. Your <laughs> segues, I, that I'd say. That was an interesting segue. Sure. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> well, designer series statues are still going along, and whenever Stanley Lau paints something, we're like, yep. 
give us another one, please, especially because we're just coming out of the animated world. Sure. And Stanley just decided I'm going to paint a cat woman like this, and I'm like, oh, yeah, that's amazing. Oh, so yeah. good. So we were all in, like, instantly. Was, and uh, some stuff happens in the, in the department, we'll debate, we'll argue about stuff, and right. I'm like, nope, go. Yeah, no, <laughs> no second guessing that one. No, yep. She and that, that's a really good piece. And this uh, Capullo Joker piece was really cool. I remember that cover that he did. Uh huh. Yeah. So we were actually debating even have two di two different heads. We can pull this one off because not everybody's a fan of the, you know, ripped off Joker face. Right, right. Um, but so if we had a normal Joker head, it still works as a concept. Sure. So we'll see. We're we're gauging reaction. Gauge. I like it. There you go. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's what twenty cents, <laughs> two bucks in. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. See how many I can squeeze in by the end of that thing. And then this just came in yesterday. We unpacked it in the back closet there. Uh, there's a Josh Middleton Batgirl. And he's a great cover artist. He has so many different styles. But and again, he drew this thing. We saw it. We're like, get it to the show. Yeah. Get it to the show because Daniel's coming. Yeah, there you that's, go. That's I like it. I like it. <laughs> I figured you might. Um, we're also reproducing a couple of our bigger statues down here in the mini statue line. Okay. Uh, you guys have seen all these a number of times. But, you know, if you didn't get a chance to get them when they were big, um, maybe you want to pick them up at this scale. You know, the other ones are all sold out, so um, pretty neat idea for that. We have DC bombshells still going strong. Still going. It's amazing. So that deluxe Harley's really cool. It's got like a, some tickets, some spilled popcorn. popcorn and Harley's yeah. working on the, you know, working on the um, what's the strength? Swing of the mallet. Yeah. yeah. What are those things oh called? yeah, yeah. Test the strength or something like that. I think it's, it's a thing. Uh, it goes bing. Yeah, when you, what's yeah. like this called? Something. I don't know. I. Is there a proper name for it? Does it say know. on there? Hey, Brian, what's this, what's this We're gonna little ask. thing called? A striker? Hi, striker. Oh, hey. We had to call on some experts. I did so. never guess that. <laughs> I would have never guessed that. I knew it was called something. It's cool. Yeah. It's really cool. Wow, well, I'm glad we could gauge your interest. In that. <laughs> so, yeah, and, the, and this black and everything is great because if you look at Green Arrow's guitar close up, there's actually a, a, a arrow etched in. Oh, that's cool. So, and you know, we did the black canary piece before, but we said, you know, we want to, it's fun throwing the guys in the bombshells once in a yeah. while just because it yeah. tells a bigger story. So, this is the third time we did that, I think, right? We sure. had Superman and Catwoman. Yep. Superman and Power Girl, and then the, an Aquaman piece, and then this one. So yeah, it's really it's cool. pretty cool. And then Ivy, you know, that was a really popular one when it first came out. Then the sepia tone sold out, and we're like, why not make a holiday version? Let's go. just go for it. So, Sitting with the Christmas presents. Yeah, God knows what's in there. I don't want to know. But you know, that's that's her. Yeah. With somebody else, I don't know, maybe. But you know, you know how it is. <laughs> that's right. Superhero land. So DC Cover Girls, we've switched artists up for this every year or two, depending on how things are going. Um, started with Adam Hughes back in New York and still going strong. I mean, this line's about kind of 12 years old or more with just different people on it. Right, right. Frank Cho has <clears throat> done some wonderful artwork for the company. Sure. Oh, the new Harley covers he was doing are great. So we're like, hey, would you be really interested in doing some of this? That's been great. I mean, I love the storytelling going on with yeah. this little bat here and, you know, yeah. that girl's hunting for clues. Supergirl is just seems to be loving being Supergirl. That's right. Yeah. Uh, faces enjoying cool. flight. Yeah, yeah I mean, good. I think we all probably that's, would. That's that's what our faces would all look like. I, I, fly. I'm that's pretty it. sure. <laughs> we can jump up later and try it. Okay. Let's, let's see if that works. <laughs> and then we have the Harley is just a totally different attitude. She's got that really you know, that badass look. And then Ivy is just doing her thing. Doing her thing. That's so right. Yeah. It, those are gorgeous, it, it, all of them. Pretty. And Frank's body types are great. They're not your typical superhero sure. female uh, body structures. So we, this is a really happy with the way these came out. And they're kind of retro because you look at the logos, they're all the old school. Oh, that's neat. So yeah, I don't yeah. know if you can see maybe this one. So if you look at the logos on the bases, they're all kind of the... You know, retro, yeah, that's real cool. Retro stuff, well, and and the and the costumes they have on are their you know older, older versions. So we don't do a lot of stuff based on that, but we thought with Frank's work, it just it just seemed yeah. to fit somehow. I don't of course. don't have a great explanation for you. So they're, well, they're beautiful. They're Good awesome. Job by me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so something I can't stop talking about the show is these Artist Alley toys. Now these so really cool. they're just amazing. Yeah. They let us expand our um, our reach so far. It's just been it's just been great. So, like, um, this guy over here, uh, Brand Peters, we wanted to use him the first time we saw his work. Just timing didn't work out. So, you know, that's where I we are it. now. I love it. So it's, it's so cool and so unique. And, and I don't know how he fits in that thing. I don't, yeah. don't want to know. Laws of <laughs> physics, whatever. Yeah. So, uh, Brittany Lee, is her artwork is beautiful. It's all cut paper. I don't know if you've seen her stuff before. Oh, that's but that's cool. literally cut by paper. And we're like, how are we going to... How are we going to do Translate this? Translate that into a yeah. 3D model. So yeah. we actually figured out how to do I think we figured it out sculpturally okay how I to think work so that. Too. She's gorgeous and the colors. I love the colors. It it's really makes really the design vibrant. pop. Yeah, that, yeah, having her all in those purple colors is yeah. pretty cool. Yeah. 
And then we've got the Batman by Tack Peter. So we, one of our art directors, Travis and I, have been buying his artwork already. Yeah. And we're like, hey man, like, would you be interested in doing so? And then we get this thing. And he even has, he has, um, what about Death Man? What's his word? Not Dr. Death Man. Somebody Death Man. Oh man. Should have had that. Should have nailed it. He's a really old, ba obscure Batman villain, and we just drew him in there. I'm like that's, that's cool. so crazy. Yeah. So we're like, well, I don't know if we really need him in there. So we took him out. So we just have this cool logo, this big crunchy Batman. That's cool. It's a really, it's a really cool, strong piece, which is great. Patrick Bellisteros is a it's totally different style than all these other ones. Obviously, I mean they're all pretty different from each other, but much more whimsical, fun kind of deal with Deathstroke on his, you know. It's on his day off, just having fun. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's what you do. Yeah. You tie up Robin's and throw him in a car. Oh, he's got like the tape on Robin's That's mouth. So oh, it's so good. <laughs> and then, you know, and we have this this Batman back here by Zach Heckle, but Zach Heffelfinger. Sorry, Zach. Not, maybe not the first time I messed your name up. But he's uh, he was one of the guys who was working on SpongeBob and a, clearly a big Ren and Stimpy guy. Oh, yeah, clearly. So, I mean, yeah. it's, it's just so fun. It is so fun. The Bat family helping Batman learn how to fly, like they do in the comics, but not actually fly, but, you know, That's true. helping. That's true. Helping them out. So, but yeah, all the different Robins with Red Hood and Nightwing and regular Robin over there. It's pretty. It's so neat. <clears throat> it's yeah. such a unique piece, and we really enjoy when these things come in. So we don't really try to limit them. We'll give them the character selection, like, well, you can do blah 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 or blah, and then they'll usually pick the one they want. Gotcha. And then it's just such a strong line of stuff. It's so different from anything else we are or anybody else is doing, really. All right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, they're pretty they're so cool. fun, and I just I love it. The, they're all so unique and so different from each other, and it just gives you something you know, interesting and different to add to your collection. It really is. I mean, we're just, it'll be, it'll be psyched to see what the reactions after the show for these yeah, guys. So, absolutely. and then we go back to our, you know, normal DC stuff. So this, we're just re-releasing this statue. Sure. It sold out pretty fast. So, um, really cool and really nice. So people wanted that much. So we're doing it again. Uh, this deceased Batman statue. Um, I wish we had it here for a table. We don't. There's a whole base that tells the story of what's happening in the origins oh, of deceased. Yeah. So it won't look just like this. It actually has a dark the rocks have fallen and created like a dark side type of head. Then inside the dark side head, there's a desad, and then he's got wires from the smashed up street coming out to go into the back of cyborgs. Wow. And so it tells it tells a story in the round of deceased wow. with this with this creepy freaking Batman yeah. deceased statue on there. So really happy about this one and the Batman who left statue from the metal line. Super fun, a lot going on. All yeah. you know, you read the story line, I That's imagine. Super cool. So all the all the different Batmans that he's just Oh, that's so cool, yeah. yeah. So they're not just all one Batman head. It's like all these different Batman cowls are in there. Oh, wow. While he's fighting, he's dealing with our current Batman. He's also mashing, stepping on a Robin face, trying to deal with <laughs> something. Like, I can't help it. It's just such a great, yeah, it's a great element. Um, what's fun about these statues, too, I got to whip out my pen and pencils and actually draw these. So oh, yeah. it's been a while yeah, since. Nice. Yeah, it's super cool. I had a lot of fun with, uh, with these guys. Oh, so it's. Awesome. It's super, it's great to get back to the drawing board every sure, once in a while, because sure. I don't want these things getting too rusty, you know. Yeah, exactly. I'm a creaky arm Fletcher, <laughs> that's not calling me. And then our uh, builder statues over here are really fun. You know, we did the, the Heroes one last year, the Villains are this year. So, yeah. and what's, what I do, I like about these a lot is you can actually take them off the base and they still work as standalone statues. Right, right. They're not just like, oh, here's nothing on the back. Um, that would get me angry so we didn't want to you know we didn't want to add to the anger of course so of course. especially yeah. on the villain statue you know they already got problems right yeah you don't want to antagonize the villains I, I i don't that's why this guy's here oh yeah he can well, after he can deal with all of this antagonistic attitude we're throwing around so you remember the batman 100 that the you know, yes. thing was a crime, kind of a big deal in san diego yes i mean i still can't believe we hit that number certainly wasn't in the the playbook when we started it that's for sure right um but now we're going we can at least predict six out because that's how far out we are wow, cool. so 101 is batman the frank miller piece and 102 is the jim lee one 103 is one of my favorite ones we're showing in those whole shows is great caputo oh, bat monster so thing cool. it's just sick oh, man. what's actually really cool about this one is we've even painted on the lighting like it is on the cover oh, that is cool. so if you, if you if you when you spin around so this is like the you know the bright light if you match this up with the cover the painting Echoes it like perfectly. That is really so. Cool. That one's a super super cool piece. Yeah. So creepy. I just love that yeah, one. Yeah, And then we go into the super ripped Freddie Williams statue. Yeah. He's the guy who's doing our turtles. Uh, Batman oh, nice. Okay. Crossover. Cool. Yeah. Uh, I just love these. Got this super strong, like powerful Batman. Like yeah. fly away. <laughs> fly away, bat. Fly away, little bat. <laughs> it's so great. Yeah, it's such a, it's such a great like dichotomy of things. 
And then we finally got around to this Mike Mignola piece from, uh, you know, from Gotham by Gaslight. About time. I don't know why we didn't think of it after 105 other ones right. were done. But I don't. Know, but again, John Matthews sculpted that. He also sculpted the original Mignola one, you know, with the no okay, shoulder yeah. one. Yes, yes. So just great. So cool. Such a cool piece. And then we have a Killing Joke by Brian Bolland statue, which what's even awesomer is it's going to come out the same month as this Killing Joke oh, Joker statue that. from the new Joker Crown Prince of Crime line. Wow. Joker's getting his own line. Well, I like you know it. What I mean, how, what's he been doing all this time without That's this true. arch enemy? You He's know? got a lot of Batmans to catch up with. Yeah, know? just a few. Yeah, hundred. <laughs> we only got let's see, ninety-seven yeah. more to go. All right, get on that. Well, we're trying because we already have. I mean, the Joker has appeared so many times by sure. so many different people. Just like this, you know, Batman's just great. He's so diverse, but so is he. There are right. so many interpreters. We've already pulled out like I don't know, eighty different jokers oh, we could easily do absolutely. you know just from artists alone but the looks are yeah. all over the place so we picked these three out because what i wanted to show everybody is we're not just sticking with this color palette and we okay. talked about it because you know the harley color palette's very consistent yes you've got you know the black and the red and the greats all the same throughout the whole line sure. same with him but joker we're like so we i think that this one first we're like yeah okay that's a, the jim lee one that was in black and white first we just repainted it we're like yeah, yeah that works and then we're like, oh, but you can't paint this one purple because in, in the book, he's got a black suit on. Yeah. So you can't just, and especially now that we're back to direct from the source, you can't just go making up crazy nonsense. Right. You know, stick to the source, so like that doesn't really work. And the Bermejo Joker is also very specific to his, you know, the dark tone of the book. You can't paint him like this. Sure. So we're like, oh, are people going to be like, oh, I don't know if I want them all because I don't know if they're all going to line up. As a, but as a collection, I think they'll hold up pretty I strong. Think so too. And Joker's so unpredictable too. fellow. That's right. You can't, you can't that's control, right. control his color. Hey, and power. you know what? Probably the red mouth, the red smile will be there most of the time, if uh, not all the time. Almost all of them have yeah, that, yeah. yeah. And so, yeah, and the, but the orange shirt is there sometimes, but yeah. not other times. Yeah. Um, so that was an interesting d debate of how we're going to pull this thing off. I mean, the base should hold them all together, so the bases will all be the oh, same, cool. like, yeah. like all the other ones. Actually, it's got a, uh, the base has the Joker logo with the ha ha's. Oh, It'll be a little cool. brighter in production so you can see it, but yeah. um, that'll be the same for everybody. So that should hold it together yeah. pretty consistently. So we're really, ex I'm, I'm really excited about this line. So we've been talking about this for a while, and we keep, you know, we, the funny thing is that Jim Lee Joker was at one point the best-selling Batman black and white was this. Oh, really? And I'm like, come on, in his own line, yeah. like Batman can't even get his own best-selling statue. Of course, of course. Well, Todd McFarlane finally trumped all the other ones with the Todd McFarlane. That is actually going to be the best-selling one oh, yeah? of oh, all of them, awesome. probably. So at least Batman is in first place in his own there statue. You go. There you go. <clears throat> so I'm actually very relieved because <laughs> at one point it was him and then Harley and then Batman, then a Batman. Well, everybody loves the bad guys. Come so. on, but yeah. still. Yeah. So anyway, and then the Harley line, they're, they're, these have been great to work on. Um, the uh, Steve Pugh from the Breaking Glass book, uh, that was such a good comic book. It really came out great. And she's a little smaller than the other ones you can yeah. see, but she's a kid right, in right. the book, so I can't make her the same size. So she's in scale with everybody else. Amanda Connor over here with uh, <laughs> so much going on. I know, look at all the spikes. I know, it's even worse <laughs> than my shoes. I mean, I, got a, I only got a few on the back. And then you've got uh, Stanley Lau, Harley, you know, beautiful as usual. Then you've got this Julian uh, Tedesco cover. I don't know if you remember this cover when it came out. The look, the way that translates it's into a so statue great, with right? the, the bubble it's, that she's blowing. Perfect. Oh, it's cool. Yeah, it really worked out well. And then we're really happy to have a J. Scott Campbell piece in the line That's doing awesome. the last Charlie. So it's a pretty strong assortment of three of our favorite characters. Yeah. Um, yeah. Ooh, is that it? I think we did. So breezy. I think, yeah, breezy. It was breezy. It was breezy. And you know what? Hey, at the beginning, we said that this was DC Collectibles, but I guess it's important to note that we're back to DC Direct now, aren't we? Yeah, DC Directables. DC Directables. Okay, <laughs> yeah. got it. You heard it here oh, first. No. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, we actually, uh, thanks for going to talk about that, because yeah. we have actually had a lot of conversations over the years about that. And really, because DC Collectibles, to us, was at one point reading more like a product category, so so many other people that you could say are DC Collectible. Yes. Sideshow yes. makes technically DC Collectibles, and some yes. other part, Codable Key, and all the other guys. But there's only one DC Direct. And that's us. That's and so and we want to go back to that. We were reestablishing our from the source, you know, uh, branding, because that's where we pull everything from for the most part. Right. So we're like, let's just go do it again. I like so it. why not, right? Everything old and new again, I suppose. That's right, that's right. That's the way it works. Me. Always good. <laughs> <laughs> Boo. <laughs> so good. Awesome. Well, I think that wraps it up, Jim. Yeah, so I don't know how you're going to explain the opening. But I don't either, but it's, well, we're at the end, so you should probably just go ahead and crawl back under. Yeah, and crawl back under the other uh, peephole. <laughs> I get through your peephole. But I don't have the lighting anymore. Oh, that's cool. I have the special lighting. 
Well, all right. I guess we're just, right. can we do like? Can you like zoom in on my eyeball? Zoom in on us. <laughs> yeah, I guess we could. We put our two eyeballs together. <laughs> no, no, we're not doing that. <laughs> well, yeah, that might be uncomfortable. Oh no, yeah, we're done. Yep, okay. that's it. So forget it. We're just gonna close out normal style. Okay, normal style. So what, are, what are we gonna say? Well, Jim, do me up. What are you gonna say? Go. Um. Just, so let the people hear. Oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, We're making up a good ending right now. Okay, uh, you say uh, this is Pixel Dan. Thanks for watching. Okay, you got it. it. Okay. Okay, hi. So this has been Pixel Dan. <laughs> thanks for watching my podcast. And I'm here with Jim Fletcher. Thanks for touring the booth. Yeah, thanks for coming to DC Directables, everybody. Oh, All right, <laughs> fantastic. We'll see you next Toy Fair. And thanks for watching. I wear crazy clothes. <laughs> Coverage of Toy Fair 2020 with Pixel Dan is brought to you by Megalopolis, City of Collectibles. Visit them online by following the link in the video description below. And be sure to follow Pixel Dan here on YouTube for the latest from Toy Fair 2020.